Okay, I spent the last couple of weeks studying balance for HF. I don't have that up here, but um, <coughs> the companion to balance is the unun. And uh, I hope we all know what this means. It's acronym balanced, unbalanced, and unbalanced, unbalanced. Okay? We all, we all understand that, right? Okay, the basic one-to-one -one current balance is to keep a, a well-balanced resonant dipole um, limiting the, the, the current that returns on the coax. If you just hook the, the coax to a well-balanced dipole that's adequately long and tuned, you know, uh, like we say, 20 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters, 160 meters. Um, the one-to-one -one current bellin uh, effectively uh, inserts an impedance between the, uh, the dipole and the coax to keep the uh, energy on the dipole from reflecting down the coax and coming <coughs> back, back into your radio, back into your transmitter, and like, like we say, uh, um, RF in the shack. Now, for for if you're just doing a few watts, it's probably not a big deal. But um, people have thousand watt rigs now, so we don't want we don't want uh, 10, 100, 500 watts coming down into your uh, back into the shack, and it will appear above ground. So that's bad. So without the ballon, coax and antenna both act as radiators instead of only the dipole. What we want is we, we want the dipole to radiate the energy, not the coax, not the, not the shield of the coax. So uh, we use the, the ballon to balance the energy into the dipole with, without uh, the problems of RF from this in the shack, the rep repress, re reciprocity, that's it, that's those four syllable words. <laughs> you might be able to get your antenna far enough away from power lines, switching power supplies, computers, and other noise sources in the shack, but if your coax is actually part of the radiating antenna, then you are receiving noise from all of those sources. So without... Um, a ballon on the dipole, all the, um, the apparatus that you have in your shack and near your radio, when you're trying to receive something, will affect the, uh, the noise level. <clears throat> and everybody has computers and cell phones and internet of things, all this stuff. You don't want the coax to be the antenna you want to receive from the dipole. And the balance does that for you. Um, a one-to-one -one current balance is actually a, a choke transformer um, on a toroid. Um, yeah, ideally, you want it to be lossless, have identical <clears throat> windings, and exhibit infinite common mode impedance, which is all uh, supernatural. <laughs> In reality, we can't get any of these things, we can just approach them. <coughs> so feeding the dipole with the coax, with the, uh, the balance between the coax and the dipole, uh, it puts a reactive adjustment on the, the energy coming out of the, uh, the center feed and uh, allows the dipole to absorb the energy from the transmitter instead of it, some of it being radiated by the coax. Um, so significantly reduce the RF in the shack. Your antenna will behave like a dipole. And why spend all this time and trouble putting up a really nice dipole if the coax is radiating and receiving? So this is a famous chart, and I don't know, there, 
even though there's type 43, 31, and 61, isn't there another type? Or is it my imagination? Lots of types. 43, 31, and 61, those are the, the main ones. Yes. Okay. So this, this is a famous chart. This guy spent quite a bit of time. This, this, this is probably months of work creating this chart, testing all of these, these uh, cores, and uh, how they behave. And the, the, uh, the legend down at the bottom shows, uh, interprets what the colors mean. So um, what I did is I bought a couple of these guys, the 24031s. Here. So I made a... 9 to 1, balanced, and a 16 to 1, unbalanced. That's what this does. This allows you to hook it to a long wire, in fed. But uh, doing this, I also learned that if I want to do in fed, like in my apartment, you know, because I can't put wires outside, I need a 49 to 1. But that's not a balance, it's a transformer. These, they, these are true balance here. Whereas a 49 to 1 is a transformer. That's, that's a different subject. But it's something that I learned about this that I need to do for my, myself. Is it a step up or a step down? It's, yeah, step up. So it's 50 to what, 2500 or something like that. 2400. Because a long wire is what they call a random, a random wire. So you put the, the long wire out, and using your SWR or your um, your computer, however you're doing this with your radio, you can you can take away pieces of the wire until it you get you know at least down below two, which you probably can do, you know, 1.5 to probably 70 megahertz, you can probably get below 2 for the whole spectrum with a 49 to 1. But that's a different subject. That's not a balance. Okay. So, I had this core. Um, I'm not sure what type it is. These are the 31s. This, this is the FT24031s. There are two of these. And uh, this is the wrong kind of wire for high power. Uh, I, just, uh, I just made these to, to test the SWR on these. And uh, using balanced and unbalanced um, antennas. With the right wire, you can use these on 5,000 watts. Yeah. So the way these are, any 100 watt, these will handle 100 watts easily. And so will this. Even this little one will handle 100 watts. Um, but this one has much better performance than these at HF. And I don't know why, but I don't, this is just something I saved, I mean, from my childhood. I've had this thing a long time. I just said, well, you know, I had this thing, I might as well test it. So I, I tested it last night, and it actually behaved better on a, on a balanced, balanced line, balanced dipole. Uh, so the reasons for using the current balance, reduce common mode, feeding the, the dipole directly to the coax, get, getting multiband, um, having the ma maximum possible RF that wastes very little RF, and match the higher impedance of the dipole with the unbalanced lower impedance of the transmitter. And the typical values are 1 to 4, well, 1 to 1, that's for the current balance, but there are different ones, 1 to 4, 1 to 9, and 1 to 16. And that's what this is. This is a, a, this is a 1 to 9, and this is a 1 to 16. It's the square of the turns. See, there are three turns on here. The square of 3 is 9. And there are four turns on here. Square of 4 is 16. With two wires, it would be the one to four. So three and 
three windings, four windings, one to nine, one to sixteen. Now, the odd number gives you balanced input. You see how there are four wires here? The, the feed is here. The feed goes to the ones in the center, and the dipole goes to the ones on the outside. Because this is 16, it's even numbers. So it's fed from, from the bottom of the windings, and the, the, uh, the windings transform the impedance to the high end. So there's a single lead sticking out this all by itself. So you can see the yellow line. I can pass these around too, if you want, if you want to see it. <coughs> so I, I made these in about 30 minutes. And I ordered the course from Amazon. I had this one. This is kind of peculiar. I was trying to do a, a, um, a loop and uh, this suspended the tube so I could just clip it to the, to the leads. It has a BNC on the end of it. This is a um, one to nine. <coughs> So what I did was I overrated, you know, uh, 100 watts you can get by with number 20. I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you're talking continuously for a long period. 500 watts, the wire, the wire that's the wire that's wrapped around the, the uh, toroid. Number 14 and 1,000 watts, number 12. So you need the big core to do number 12. Um, so the under-engineered ballon, this is important, the under-engineered ballon may get hot during continuous high-power <coughs> transmissions. Arc, arcing is promoted by heat. The hotter it gets, the more likely it will arc. Now, th these ballons, I didn't insulate the, uh, <coughs> the core. Typically, if you're going to use that at high wattage, you wrap the, uh, the toroid in insulating tape, uh, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, there's single sticky side uh, Teflon that plumbers use. That that would probably work. It does. It's, uh, it, does. it lasts a long time. Yeah, it works. And, and John John gives his seal of approval. <laughs> um, so if you're just using the the core bare like that, 100 watts is fine because a, a coil that size won't get hot unless Unless you short the output, it might get hot then, but probably not. It's so big, it can probably dissipate the power from the transmitter. Okay, arcing is promoted by <coughs> heat. Heat causes the core to lose its effectiveness. So the hotter the core gets, the less, the less um, it will transform the impedance and the energy. It'll absorb more. So the hotter it gets, the hotter it gets. <laughs> it runs away. So... It, uh, the heat contributes to the RF reflecting back into the shack, which is very bad at high power. I don't know if anyone here is using 1,000 watts anyway. We have 1,000 watts in the shack out here, don't we? 13. Yeah. Okay. So you have to have a really good balance up there. So caution is uh, high wattage is high voltage. Um, I think I, I listed the voltage back here. Yeah, see 100 watts is 70 volts at 50 ohms. 500 watts is 158 volts, and 1,000 watts is 224 volts. <coughs> so those are deadly voltages. Um, so the high wattage, you have high, high voltage. Uh, pay attention to the insulation. Of uh, the, the wire, the, the higher wattage balance use, uses uh, magnet wire insulated by Teflon tubing so that uh, if it gets really hot, it won't arc. And uh, we don't want our expensive 1,000 watt final to short out on an arc, do we? Do I hear a no? <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, use the gauge that's appropriate. 
uh, to dissipate the heat in case, in case for some reason some, uh, you know, a squirrel chews on your coax and shorts it out. And you key that transmitter, and psh, you know something yeah, bad zero. happens. So be careful not not to uh, short the the dipole or you know branches falling on your dipole wires anything at high power you'll you, you'll regret it. Um, Large cores reduce the saturation. The, in other words, the bigger the core, the, uh, the less it will saturate and the more power it will handle, obviously. I mean, we all, we all understand that. But I have to write it. I have to write it down. <laughs> so we want um, to apply high wattage. We, uh, low frequencies make it even worse. The lower the frequency, the more likely it is to saturate. So low frequency balance that, that are designed for extremely high power are very large. They're you know they're massive like a like a bowling ball size. Okay, um, and of course everybody knows water is a big problem. At the, you're bowling because it's up there in the sky, um, outside with you know all these wires hooked to it. Water can get into it, so it's important to keep the water out of the enclosure. Um, so you can depend on the, your balance not being perfect. There's always some nonlinear uh, aspect to the total antenna system that the balance <coughs> contributes, but it contributes less than not having it. <laughs> yeah. A good balance will have a small amount of reflected energy and re insertion loss. Um, at the end of the ballon, you can see there's a, there's a gap where the, uh, the leads come out. That's, a, that's usually about 30 degrees, five minutes on the clock. Um, compressing the turns increases the inductance. Spreading the turns decreases capacitance. So it's typically everybody crowds the, uh, the windings together. That's typically how it's done. Keep the leads as short as possible. It lowers the Q, which is the figure of merit of the... The ratio of the energy passed to the antenna to the energy dissipated as heat. <coughs> so, <coughs> typically, materials. You, uh, I bought all these materials <laughs> myself, and it came to less than fifty bucks for for making two, two complete. Uh, the boxes, the eyelets, uh, the tape, the uh, silicone wire is recommended. It's a it's a cheap way to uh, get by having to use uh, Teflon wire. Well, Teflon wire is great stuff, but boy, is it hard to deal with. It's slippery and it doesn't strip well. So, um, but te you know, if you can get Teflon wire, if you want to deal with that, boy, but it's tough. It's That's tough dealing with Teflon wire, but it doesn't burn. <laughs> okay. Um, the SO239 chassis mount, I, I, I went to um, BNC because I don't, I don't have any, uh, any coax with these uh, larger connectors, but I'm sure there's plenty of it back here, right? Um, there's this magic gel that you can, you can put uh, on all of your connections which keeps the water out, but it's terribly sticky but it, it, if if you've tested everything it's all together and you know that uh, it's right you can use that gel to um, to keep the water out all the holes and all the connectors uh, it's that isn't it that sticky stuff that you you find inside the tele buried te telephone cables it's the same kind of sticky stuff right but it's expensive uh, a tube is about 30 bucks Okay, and then there's, you know, the uh, industrial duct tape, which is made for outside uh, and waterproof. If, if you have seams and stuff, you can wrap it. At least it will keep the water out of, for a few months or a couple of years. And these are the, the typical single-core balance windings. Uh, schematics. Now, the one to six is very peculiar. Very strange. But the one-to-ones, uh, balanced and unbalanced, 
and the one to nine are, are typical. These three on the on the outside here. I don't know why I put the one to six there. Can I can I ask a question? Yes, sir. You went for the core. What what about the ones where you use the uh, the feed line air and use a half wave uh -huh. to make the contact? Yeah, the air, uh, air core yeah. balance. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why did you change? Why did you do this instead of? Well, air core balance can't handle the power that the oh, okay. that the uh, right. ferrite cores can. Right. In other words, a really high power air core is going to be huge, you know, big okay. thing. Whereas this can be put in a little box. Okay. That's that's a big difference. I mean, you can always do air core. Air core is is going to behave very differently, but it, they work. I mean. Uh, and of course, there there are multi-turn air air core balance too. You can put on one, PVC, they? you know. The What's air core is usually four to one. Yeah, typically, yeah. Yeah. but they can be Anything. they can be any any configuration. It's just the ferrites um, offer a compact solution okay. because a, a big balance hanging up in the sky is a, is yeah. you know wind, and uh, the, you know it has to be enclosed and all that stuff. You know, so uh, you know if you're doing you know like a these these huge shortwave transceivers that like uh, not trans transmitters like uh, Voice of America or something. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. their balance are gigantic. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, because they're transmitting you know, hundred thousand watts or more. Yes, sir. How far off of the uh, ferrite core do you want to make your wire bridges, say, between the orange and purple, for example? These? Yeah, how far off the ferrite? This, they, uh, you can see on on my examples. Have you have you seen the so example? Out the door. Yeah, right here. <laughs> no, it is yours. It is yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, what are you talking about? How far away from the ferrite can you join those wires? Do you want to join them right on the ferrite, or do you need to bring yeah, them? Yeah, an inch or so. Close. Yeah. This is just, just a, this is blown out here so you can see how it, how it connects. But you can see here, you know, they're pretty close together. Right. And I've twisted yeah. them. You, you saw this, right? Yeah. Okay. This is just for, um, uh, Sorry about that. This is just for demonstration, so you can see how it's wired. Sure. And that's the uh, unbalanced to unbalanced. <laughs> he won't quit. <laughs> you popular, that's not what happens. So, with exactly the same windings, you can do a four to one balanced or unbalanced. You can see how. It's basically a center tra transformer, and balance to balance is using one tap. You see how the, the phasing adjusts the, the, the impedance here. This is four to one, because there are two windings, so it's the square of the windings is the impedance. So if this is 50 ohms, it's loaded with 50 ohms, right? Four times 50 is what you see here. The same way here, unbalanced. So you can see they're identical, it's just that the wires are this way, and here they're reversed. Clever. So you can actually make have one that does both. And these are just some sites that I, I stuck in there. Okay. <laughs> now, this is the nominations closed business. Yes, sir. Oh, are you going to have any questions? Questions. So, and this is open for anybody. Yeah. But, um, so I've used a balanced current balance for my low power 5 watt applications. Yes. <clears throat> um, for a balanced dipole antenna. Long wire. 
there's, there's a tune length. Yes. Balanced dipole antenna, just a garden variety antenna. Center. Center fit. Okay. Mm -hmm. so balanced. Mm -hmm. Up high. Right, just straight normal balance, mm -hmm. current balance up at the top. Is it is it V? In my case, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. V in there. Okay. Um, question I have is by using that balance, am I restricting the current that comes down the outside of my coax? Yes. Yeah, that's what it's for. That's what a balance is for. It, it, it reduces the reactance of the, of the, of the energy that, that the shield is, is providing. Because the, the, the dipole is higher impedance than the coax. So, because the coax is much lower impedance, you know, electrical resistance to the energy than the dipole, the energy wants to come back down the, the outside of the coax. Actually, the energy is on the outside of the coax. So, so the, the, the transformer that I so show you. Let, let me rephrase my question. Yes, sir. Is there a practical, yeah, that picture right there, is there a practical difference between a one to one current ballon mm -hmm. and a choke ballon on the coax itself? A one to one ballon is a choke ballon. That's what it is, it's a choke. And they go by different names, but basically it's just a, it's a choke transformer is what it is. Just two coils. And then for unbalanced antennas, where we intentionally want the coax to be part of the antenna. You don't want that. No, for an unbalanced antenna, such as an NFED antenna, many yeah. times the coax is part of the but antenna. That's bad. You never want that. You want to avoid that. You want to do whatever it takes to keep the energy out of the coax because if the... If I'm, the I'm in agreement. Yeah. So the question is, if I pull, put um, choke beads, as it were, yeah, that, on the coax, yes. a certain distance from the feed point on mm -hmm. an NFED antenna, mm -hmm. would that limit the, the, the RF on the outside of the current at the beads? Yes. 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 And, and thus making reduce, a choke. And it's making a choke and mm -hmm. put it part way back on the coax. Yeah. You can also coil the wire. To create another coil the coax. air coil. Right, air next coil to the, right below the dipole where it feeds. Right. The more the Wherever better. Wherever the resonance is stopping. Not on an NFED, though. No, not NFED. <coughs> NFED no. is too NFED needs a transformer. Right. So this I'm is thinking, not a transformer. Right, right, right. So the reason I ask is because um, it, I have run into problems with getting RF back into my shack yeah. when I'm running digital modes. Because the, the system I'm using isn't very, it's susceptible to RF if it's nearby. So. If I go with an NFED antenna, it really pisses off my computer. Yeah, well, <laughs> mouse stops working. They, everything yeah. just kind of goes we'll to hell. Put it's the like, ah. before it comes into the building. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, well, yeah. well, I'm yeah. running. I'm running portable in these cases, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, with the NFED antenna, I struggle mm -hmm. because my computer doesn't like it. Well, so, um, but then there are situations where I really want, because of the mechanics of where I'm set up. It would be so much easier if I just had a, an NFED antenna. So I'm looking for a way to run an NFED antenna, but keep the RF away from okay away from the transmitter. That uh, NFED antenna is the end that you're feeding is high impedance, whereas a dipole is lower impedance. Not low, but it's lower impedance. That's right. So uh, by a factor of like forty or fifty to one. Mm -hmm. So. Um, NFEDs need a, um, a transformer right. to transform the, the uh, impedances. Uh, that also keeps the energy in the antenna and out of the shack. Because the right. reason why you're, you're, if, you're right. if you're just using a low impedance balance, it's not, it's not helping. No, in that case I was not. 
You're just using straight. You're feeding the. I was end. actually using a chain match at that time. That's beside okay. the point. Um, a three, three to fourteen, auto former winding. Um, it's very similar to this. Very, very similar to. Let me see where is it. It's very similar to this. So instead of the uh, instead of the, these windings, it does this 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 uh, diving through the center like this. But there are fourteen turns around here, and there are three that are shared. So you're driving it with 50 ohms with three shares, so it's 3 to 14. Um, is that right? 3 to 14. Yeah. So minus, minus 3, yeah. You're right. Somebody knows. So it gives you a 49 to 1. So the, the, uh, the, the output, the, uh, like this, the unbalanced, the unbalanced output is, um, is floating at 2,500 ohms. Mm -hmm. So it, ice, it keeps the RF, it's transforming the impedance. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're feeding it with, with uh, high, high power, there's extremely high voltage coming out of that thing. So it has to, so, some of the, uh, these autoformers on big high power rigs with, single, with the, the uh, single wire, what they call the random wire. Um, yeah, Corona's coming out of the damn thing, yeah. Lightning. <laughs> okay. So that that'll keep the RF out of the shack, and and uh, you have to understand when you're when you key that transmitter, if there's RF in your equipment, it's also in your body. So you're absorbing the RF with because you're you're well, holding. We, we experienced that on a field day one time where things weren't set up quite right, and the microphone reached out and. Zapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's grounding the outside of the, of the trailer half immensely. Well. Yes. Yeah, I imagine it did. <laughs> <laughs> the other half of that, though, is also the, the radiation pattern of your antenna. Mm -hmm. You know, because obviously you're radiating energy out of the antenna. So if your computer and stuff is in range of the radiation coming off the antenna, that's another path. So yeah, ver vertical whips are uh, real long wire, <coughs> you know, off off uh, a tree or something is, is typically how, how they. Now I, you know, I didn't do any of that stuff here, but I know that's your your dilemma is with the long wire, single long wire in fed. <coughs> yeah. The in fed is is always troublesome because you're dealing with high impedance, low to high. You have to have some. That's what the cores are good for. That and it, it can be air core. You can do air core um, in fed, but you have to have some way to translate the impedance. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you go back to the picture that has the two red arrows on it with the coax? Oh gosh, which one? Back. Your choke bay one that you have up there. Tell me when to stop. No, no, keep going. going. That? Yeah. Uh-huh. So I don't, there's there's something there that a lot of people get stuck on. Mm -hmm. When you are transmitting into that, the shield actually has two directions of current flow. Mm -hmm. You The inside, of, look at it as a piece of copper pipe instead of the, the mm -hmm. braided shield. The inside of that pipe is carrying the RF or half of it to the antenna. But when it hits the antenna and you don't have a ball in there, then half of it comes back down the other side of the shield. Yes. Two, even though it's one conductor, it's got two directions. Yes. Surface effect. And yes. yes. Uh huh. It is a skin effect. The yeah. yeah, it's so, coming on, on the, the outside of the of right. coax so instead of the inside. If you yes. put beads on there like you talked about, uh -huh. that's why it works. Oh, yeah. Because it works. You're, yeah. You're, you're stopping it on the outside from half uh -huh. the conductor. So, and, what my question, though, was. was if I put uh, a toroid ballon, current ballon, just a simple current ballon that's unbalanced to balanced, okay? It'll still work. How is that keeping the 
the RF from coming down the outside of my coax. Same way. It's, yeah, it's the same thing. It's a, it's a because charge. that's made a high impedance, it just well, it's still, it's still keeping it's the broken the from getting connection past between that. the outside right. of the shield and half the dipole. Jay, yes. back to the your four drawings again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a picture's worth a thousand. Right? Yeah, that's why I put in there. <laughs> this? On, on the, up in the upper left there, that one to one. Yeah. I'm thinking about why would the turns, you get four turns one direction and four turns the other way. Well, it, to me, that in a transformer world, is, that seemed to cancel out. This is actually out, a, a turn. This is actually a turn. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I get that, but half of them are going one direction, the other half are. Do the right hand. Oh, looks but, like it's a different. But they're now. parallel. The wires right are parallel. Right hand uh, ah. no, no, it looks it looks funny to me too. Because but. an air core is all in uh, one direction, and well, uh, okay. aids are one direction. That's got something going on there. Yeah. I have to think about it more. I guess. Yeah. That's the course. It's two wires doing this. So this is the core right here. I think what he's saying, Jay, is that you look at the bottom, it's going this way, and then he goes back and he goes across off the top, look uh -huh. at the top, and then goes underneath on the other side at the top going to the right. Okay. So take Take, the, like you're reversing the, <coughs> take these turns here, the ones on the top, and push them back, push them around. They're, they continue the way they are. You still go right hand the whole way. It's confusing. It's because it's a donut. In essence, that diagram, you'd have to move the dot on one of those up the other way. Yes. You're changing the. the you're changing. Tumbling. You're changing the twist. Yes. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, well. So, so the current bound that I built just went around in the same direction all the way around. And then that, because that then forced the current to be equal in both leads all the way around. It's equal in that Now, that said... Honestly, I've never tested it. I just used it. <laughs> I could have good SWR, but well, the auto does this. I was transmitting my hell and everything was white. It goes around like this. And the wire out but I never hooked anything to it. That's the same thing, but with a single wire. Okay. This right hand all the way. I have to measure it to figure it out. Yeah. So you get. A ratio between the number of windings on the primary and the secondary. It's just like a regular transformer. It's just that it's it's using the toroid to make the current circulate. You can you can use oh you can use um, you know ferrite cores that are that are linear rods. Some people prefer that. In fact, many of the balance that you buy in the PVC pipes that's what they are. They're they're rod balance. They're not toroid balance. So what's our next thing? Okay. No.